It's unbelievable. And then, of course, there's the Star Trek the era. The Star Trek thing, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a- t- tell me about the visor. <laughs> I got to know about the visor. Because I got to say, to me, mm-hmm. the visor looked like a, a... There's girls in the control booth. What are the things you put when you put in your hair to make your hair... It's not a barrette. Because those are the... Banana clip. Is it... What's the thing... Headband. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like it to, yeah. to me looked like just a woman's headband they yeah. threw on you. That was the they, they weren't that was the that was the inspiration. Was it? It was. No, it was it not. It was the inspiration. No, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, well, come on. Really? Ask Michael Okuda, the man who de- who who designed it. Um, it. It was it was inspired by a Denise Okuda um, headband, a women's uh, hair retention device. There. You, okay. So I'm not crazy. No. You're not. You're not. See, I was. Ju- I was just thought it was one of those things where they were like, they've spent so much money hiring you. You're, a, you know, your your ginormous fee and and the sets. And they're like, oh Jesus Christ, we forgot to do the goddamn eye thing for him. <laughs> what about this? Throw on a headband and like, ah, this works for me. And off they go. Fram oil filter. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. Right. Didn't it ever drive you berserk? It. It. You know. It. 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 Um. It became my nemesis. I'm sure. Um, By the first lunch break. It, it was exciting at first, and then the, the real challenge of acting with, without my eyes um, sort of landed, and it was like, wow, okay. Um, did you have a, I wish I'd have thought, it seemed like such a good idea in rehearsal. It did. It, 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 that's, it, it was like I was so excited, and then the, the reality set in. <laughs> <laughs> and I, what the hell have I gotten myself into here? Um, because it's that I, I I wore an eye patch in um, Austin Powers. Yeah, and that thing used to drive me bananas. Is it the d- depth perception thing? Yes, right. the depth perception, and and I, it's kind of like seeing a little is worse than not seeing at, at all, all maybe yeah see so did you have like you had upper peripheral vision no i du- did not no I, no I couldn't see above my my head i couldn't see you couldn't see at all i couldn't see my feet no no i could see r- what was right in front of me and the and the challenge was to not look for my feet right um Jeez. because you know chief engineer had to know every inch of that ship and uh and you couldn't see me hesitating to, to figure out where the you know where the ramp was, or you know, I bumped into a lot of shit in the first season. That that would be a good behind the scenes. <laughs> it was challenging. It was challenging. Did you have any uh, um, um, apprehension about that kind of like Star Trek being such an iconic thing and doing a, a rebirth of it, or did you know this is going to be amazing? I just want to be a part of it. I just wanted to be a part of it. Of course, yeah. I, was, I just wanted to be a part of it, and you know, I I think I had um, I wasn't. I wasn't afraid of it because um, overcoming the stereotype of of Kunta Kinte, you know, was was the was the job, you know, that that Dolores and I undertook um, after Roots to make sure that I had a career that that um, that had any sort of longevity. In order to do that, I was going to have to, you know, beat the tendency. Uh, Universal wanted to do the Life and Times of Kunta Kinte, or you know a series based on Mm -hmm. stories and that i just figured that was going to be the the end the end before just as it's beginning just as it's beginning so was gene roddenberry alive yes very much so what was he did you meet him what was he like very much very much he was you know he he was that visionary but one of the things that i learned from gene was Gene Roddenberry, obviously, who created created Star Trek. St- creator Star Trek. They yeah. called him the Big Bird of the Galaxy. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, Gene. Gene taught me that all of our heroes are human. Because I did, I did revere him, and then I met him, and then I, and then I realized he, he's a guy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He, he was from that generation of the three martinis at lunch, and you know, you look at all the first. You look at Star Trek, the original Star Trek. All the women wore very short skirts. He was a man. <laughs> Of his generation, yeah, 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 right. So the the idea that 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 he could that both things could be true, he could be this incredible visionary, and at the same time, um, you know, have have the kinds of foibles that that most men do, and that was uh, that, I think that was one of the most important lessons I've ever learned. That's a great one. It is. That's 
I'm going to steal that. I've got a couple people I'm going to use that answer on. Yeah. It's a really good answer. Alex Haley taught me that your authentic voice as a storyteller is the only thing you've got. Right. Develop it. Develop it. Know who you are as the storyteller. Right? Yeah, and, it's, and that's why I, actors are just a, a, right. an offshoot because it's the same that's thing. That's right. It's the, same, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Now, when... Because I, I conflate all of the Star Treks. I get. Yeah, I start to get them. I get it at a certain point, <laughs> and and I go because Whoopi is an old friend too. Right. And Whoopi was on, and we were talking about her time on Star Trek. Right. But you guys didn't. Did you overlap? Mm-hmm. You we were, did. We were, okay. the, we were in the same. We were in the same cast. Um. In in the same cast. In fact, it was Whoopi. Whoopi and I were talking because we both shared a love for the original Trek and Michelle Nichols and Star Trek as an example of pop culture where black people were included yes and that was huge for 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 both of us and so she said to me i want to be on star trek would you tell rick berman and i did and and he didn't believe me oh right i remember she was the biggest star in in the the fucking world world. i think she just won an oscar yeah and she wanted to do television which was not done back in the day no 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 i mean no, no, there, there was, there was no crossover. So it was. Whoopi it, doesn't give a fuck. Nah, she just does what she wants. That's why she's Whoopi, right? That's why she's so free. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's. I mean, talk about following your muse. Yeah. Unfettered, unfettered. <laughs> she was just. A, she was just on the show, and she's so. She's another one, just yeah. like hugging on Whoopi. It's like she's just the best. Yeah, she and Fred and Fred Rogers, and 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 Alex. Uh, to a certain extent, I put them in the category of most authentic people I've ever met. Tell me about Fred Rogers. I never met him. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, between the, the the books and growing up with him, right? I I was just fascinated that he could time his clothing routine in those opening credits well, down he, to the. He wrote the song, so he knew how much time he needed. Exactly. I mean, he knew. <laughs> he knew exactly. <laughs> he knew exactly. Right, and his mom knitted those sweaters. People talk about Christopher Walken having an interesting speaking rhythm. Yeah. I think Fred Rogers has one of the great speaking rhythms of all time. Yeah. It was also married with an intentionality um, of focus. He was was laser locked on you when you were in his presence. And you felt the full force of his attention, which was considerable. He was... Probably one, certainly one of the most patient human beings I've ever met, and openly, honestly, caring and loving as a human being. Because you wait, because he's so like embedded in the public consciousness as Mister Rogers. As he, you keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. There was no other. There's shoe. no other shoe. He was that guy. See, when I first met him, I was expecting. I was excited to meet. The real guy, right? Yes, because that's got to be an act, has right? To be, right? Has to be yeah, an yeah. act. Yeah. No, nope. that's it was Fred. And there's no one that that occupies that particular space nope. today. No, nah. no. Nah. I mean, kids are not growing up to Mister Rogers' neighborhood today. Unfortunately, not. They just aren't. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what what Mister Rogers would have thought of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, Fred was a musician first and foremost, right? So he he probably would have he probably would have dug it. Do you do a Fred? Do you do any impersonations? No, and I'm not a mimic. I don't I don't do impressions. I'm I I marvel at people who do because that's that's like you know yeah. like in the canon of impersonations. Oh, yeah. everybody yeah, does yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rogers, Mr. everybody does a Fred Rogers. Yeah, um, but he was he I believe I I call him a saint. He certainly was a saintly individual. I just, I'm, I, I'm just going to go ahead and claim it for him. Claim it. Fred Rogers was a saint. That's so, that's amazing. Yeah. 